Thank you very much for the introduction. Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be, to be there today and to uh, be there on behalf of the OECD. As you mentioned rightly, the OECD is an intergovernmental organization in Paris, based in Paris, with 34 member countries. So we are not universal, but we are global, you know, so we have countries from many different regions of the world. And I am uh, uh, mainly in charge of tourism issues within the OECD, and the OECD Tourism Committee, which is the official body of the organization dealing with tourism issues, is born in 1948, right after the Second World War, uh, with a Marshall Plan. And so the, the, the primary idea, you know, in putting tourism within the OECD was really this um, economic generation through tourism, but also the exchange of culture, you know, the, 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 the a meeting point, you know, for different culture to get together and using tourism as a vehicle for that, you know. So I think uh, with this in mind, I'm very pleased to be here uh, with the Center for Cultural Diplomacy. So the OECD countries, which are mainly, you know, highly developed economies, recognize uh, clearly tourism as an important uh, vehicle in terms of economic growth, in terms of uh, job creation, in terms of uh, development, but also in, in terms of culture uh, development. And within the OECD, uh, <clears throat> we are trying to promote what we call an integrated approach to tourism development, which means linking, you know, tourism to many of the uh, uh, policies, including culture, you know. And this is why I think we are there today also. It's really to tell you a little bit more on what we are doing in linking tourism and culture and tourism and creative industries, you know. And, um, and cultural tourism, you know, for, for, for many years, you know, uh, has been a major source of growth in tourism, you know. Uh, for example, revenues coming from cultural tourists are uh, usually much higher, you know, than uh, the, the average uh, uh, tourist. Uh, also, we, we think that, you know, by linking, you know, tourism and culture, you know, we can contribute to improve the attractiveness of a place uh, and the competitiveness of a place, you know, because we think that um, tourism and culture do not only serve a visitor economy, you know, but also contribute to improve, for example, the well-being of citizens, you know, and also contribute to improve the attractiveness of a place and then to attract investors, for example. So we are very much interested by these uh, linkages and how, you know, uh, in bringing, you know, these issues together, we can support the whole economy, uh, not only tourism, but a wide range of issues. So how are we moving from cultural tourism to creative tourism, you know, because this is more or less the subject of, uh, of my presentation. Creative industries is, uh, in, in includes, you know, a very broad uh, number of, uh, of industries, you know, from uh, design, fashion, gastronomy, literature, architecture, uh, film, gaming, you know, and so on. We could have, we could have many, many industries wh which uh, can be identified as creative industries. And um, they are now providing, you know, new markets, you know, and they are also diversifying the tourism demand. So I will tell you a little bit more on, on, on this. Traditionally, you know, the emphasis was on tangible heritage, you know, and uh, it is now being supplemented more and more by new forms of tourism based also on intangible uh, culture and contemporary creativity. Let's, let me just take a, a few examples, you know, just to, to illustrate uh, that type of issues. One is food, for example, you know. Uh, food speaks, of course, for a particular uh, national identity. Cuisine, uh, you know, uh, and gastronomy are perhaps, you know, one of the easiest way, you know, to, uh, by which culture, you know, regains some distinction, you know, in the global marketplace. And we have several countries 
now which are definitely using you know gastronomy as an important vehicle you know to promote the cultural identity of their country and also to do what soft diplomacy you know in some cases you know film and film induced tourism is another interesting uh, uh, example there and for example new zealand you know uh, which is well known for the lord of the rings uh, and it's uh, uh, film industry, you know, um, has brought international profile, has contributed to uh, create uh, jobs, and has also supported uh, uh, a film-induced, you know, uh, tourism economy, you know, um, in the in the whole country, you know, and um, and New Zealand uh, has pushed creativity uh, in many places. For example, in Wellington. Uh, to position, you know, uh, the country uh, on, on, uh, in the world. Music, for example, is another uh, important uh, creative industry which is taking a, a bigger and a bigger role. And a recent study, for example, from UK uh, Music noted that there were 6.5 million music tourists, you know, uh, going in the UK. Uh, generating, you know, over 24,000 jobs, you know. So this is, this is very uh, significant, you know. So more and more, this is why organizations like OECD, you know, are also uh, interested by uh, industries uh, like this one, you know. And the creative industries have become a, a significant, you know, economic, cultural, and social force in our economies, you know. Uh, from two to nine, ten percent in terms of GDP and employment, they contribute to innovation, to skills development. As I said, they are able to maintain the cultural identity, but, but also to enhance, you know, uh, the cultural diversity. You know, um, and so this is this is very uh, important. And. In the work we are currently doing, you know, we have been looking at the linkages, you know, between tourism and creativity and the potential benefits, you know, that these linkages can bring to the economy and to economic growth, you know. And for example, it contributes to increasing tourism demand. And uh, I can take the example of uh, food festivals, you know, for example, which exist in, in, in Italy, in Spain, in France, you know, which stimulate, you know, the demand. It diversifies um, the market, you know, it develops new markets. And for example, you can think about uh, literature uh, in Ireland, you know, they have been developing a complete new product on these issues. Um, it supports innovative approaches to marketing, and uh, a country like Spain, for example, has been using the notoriety of its uh, chef, you know, like uh, Ferian Adria or some of us, to promote, you know, the image of Spain uh, in the world. It contributes to revitalize, you know, to rethink, you know, tourism products. Uh, and for example, we see more and more um, products which are uh, co-creation with a tourist. So the tourist is not only passive, you know, and, re and receiving, you know, a product, but the tourist is also active, for example, in food or in, in different uh, type of, of, of issues in contributing, you know, to develop something new. And here, for example, in Paris, we have a welcome city labs, which are contributing a lot to, to this. Um, it contributes to design and develop new creative tourism product. I was mentioning the film-induced uh, tourism in New Zealand, and I think this is a, a very good case. Um, it, in, it also increased the demand for uh, creative products. And here, for example, uh, in, on fash fashion and design uh, in cities like Milan or Paris, you know, I mean, we clearly observe uh, such, uh, the, such issues, you know. So you see, we can see a wide range of uh, benefits, you know, for, um, for many parts of the economy in uh, developing these linkages between creativity and tourism. So uh, countries and cities, you know, 
are uh, doing uh, quite a lot on these issues. I will just take a few uh, examples, you know. Uh, for example, Korea. Uh, I don't know if you had some presentation by Korea, but Korea uh, has uh, adopted a, 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 what we would call an integrated approach, you know, using Korean pop culture, you know, uh, including fashion, film, you know, music and cuisine, you know, as a tool for soft power, you know, uh, to improve Korea's image abroad, you know, uh, and to boost exports and tourism. And this has uh, generated very uh, important uh, benefits, you know. Um, uh, the image of Korea, you know, uh, has, 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 has been gaining in notoriety, you know, in, in, in recent years, you know, and this has been observed, for example, in, a, in an area like tourism, with more visits, you know, coming from uh, uh, certain uh, source market like the United Kingdom, um, and the economic impact also of uh, of, uh, of of this Korean pop culture is also very significant, you know, with uh, an estimated benefit for tourism, for example, of 1.5 billion, you know, in 2010, supporting 25,000 jobs. So this is not minor, you know, this is. This is very uh, important. Another example would be, for example, uh, Santa Fe, you know, in the United States, which has developed creative tourism through a series of creative courses. And I was saying, you know, the tourist is not only is not anymore only passive, you know, the tourist and the consumer is active and building something, you know, with these courses. And um, in Santa Fe, they have been engaging, you know, local artists uh, and uh, stimulating also the creative participation among residents and visitors. So, you know, so I think it also brings, you know, different communities uh, together. And so uh, <clears throat> this has, you know, very significantly increased the media coverage uh, of a city. You know, um, and, and, and this was very beneficial because nearly uh, 20 million people visit Austin, you know, every year, you know, so it's, it's very significant and it uh, generates a lot of uh, added value uh, for uh, cultural related uh, tourism, which can be, uh, you know, then transformed in terms of, of jobs, you know, and uh, uh, for example. Um, the city of Berlin also is, uh, is very supportive of uh, creative networks, uh, but it's, uh, it's quite different, you know. I mean, Berlin has a, let's say, a 10 year experience, you know, in developing uh, that sort of networks. And um, the approach is much more modest, you know, it's a different approach. It's mainly based on the networks which exist, you know, on a number of small groups which exist in the city, you know, and Berlin has been building on its trunks, you know, for example, uh, the electronic music scene, you know, uh, and, and this is uh, quite successful, you know, in making Berlin, you know, a city, a, a dynamic city, a city, a creative city, you know, a city of the future, you know, and this progressively uh, is also transforming all, uh, the city, you know. Um, then we can, we can have many, many other examples, you know, I, I've seen recently uh, something on TV about Detroit, you know, which was a city more or less, you know, abandoned for part of it, you know, uh, given the crisis, you know, and creativity is uh, uh, giving the city a new birth, you know, in some areas, uh, with uh, local artists or different artists coming from uh, uh, elsewhere, you know, you know, Revitalizing, um, you know, the area. So I think I think this is really something which I think is very interesting to um, to keep in mind and to try to to support, you know. So that being said, you know, uh, in the in the work we are doing, we we are, we know we know that there are a number of important challenges, you know, uh, if we want to uh, generate more added value and growth from uh, linkages between tourism and the creative economy. A, 
this relationship between creativity and tourism, for example, or culture, you know, is not yet very high on the policy agenda. So I think this is why it is important. It's high on the policy agenda of a limited number of countries like UK, like Indonesia, uh, a few countries like this, but not so much globally. So, you know, I think this is why it's important that organizations like OECD and others, you know, uh, try to create awareness on, on these issues. So the linkages remains underdeveloped, you know, despite what we have been in, in said, you know, on, on, on the importance of these linkages. And so, uh, the full potential is not completely uh, exploited, you know. Also, too often, you know, each of these creative industry is working in what I would call a silo, you know, not together, but, you know, uh, 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 in a separate uh, 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 fashion, you know. And, and of course, I mean, the one of the difficulties we have is that both tourism and both creative industries are very fragmented, you know. Tourism is a compilation of different industries, you know. The same is true with creative industries, you know. So bringing all of this, you know, to work together, you know, and to generate, you know, added value is difficult, you know, because you have to bring a wide range and diversity of stakeholders together. So with this in mind, you know, we, we, we are thinking that there is a need for uh, governments at national, regional, local level, you know, and for different stakeholders to take active policies, you know, uh, in order to uh, generate value and to make sure that this potential is developed, you know. So we need to push for new models of creative tourism, you know, which can create these new sources of growth and deliver this added value, increase tourism demand, diversify tourism supply, and driving innovation, you know. We need to develop this integrated tourism, uh, poli sorry, policy approaches, you know, um, which need to deal with the uh, intangible and fragmented nature, you know, of the creative experiences, which can link, you know, the various uh, actors uh, and resources and support tourism uh, creative uh, development, you know. Um, and we also need to uh, think about how the governance model, you know, and how all of this is taking place and how we can ensure that the structure, you know, that the uh, can support this development. And we have around the table different models, you know. We have um, some, um, in, but in many, very often what we observe is that um, the, uh, you know, we have private sector led model, you know, like in Barcelona, uh, Creative Tourism Barcelona. We have some public sector uh, lead model, like in Shanghai, you know, we have observed, or we have public sector, what we call enabled model, like in Creative Austria. So we have different models. But what is important very often is that public authorities can provide, you know, an incentive, you know, and can provide, for example, the seed funding, you know, to support uh, the projects. Uh, given the multiplicity of, of actors, you know, it's very important that there is a clear role for the various partners, you know. Um, and very often, you know, the creative content, you know, and the creative experience itself, you know, will be developed by the uh, private sector. So we are uh, uh, finishing some work and we will do a publication, in fact, on the subject which will be released around June, you know, and also we'll do a policy workshop in, in September, you know, to promote uh, what we are, uh, the, the main messages, you know. And um, uh, in the uh, preliminary policy orientation that we are uh, developing, you know, we think that there is a need for all actors, I would say, but of course we are mainly speaking to governments, but also all actors. To, to do, to work actively, to develop creative content. Develop creative content is, uh, is key to create, you know, interesting, engaging content 
to link creativity to place. You know, that's very important, you know. Uh, and, and to some extent, it's similar to food also, you know. But creative tourism experience, uh, we need to find ways to link them to the place, you know. Um, um, because otherwise, you know, uh, they may be, you know, consumed indifferently of a place. We need to work on creative branding and storytelling. And creative tourism offers a very good opportunity, you know, to develop storytelling about the issue, you know. And, and some countries, for example, like Nordic countries, have been doing it very well, you know, around food issues, you know, uh, promoting, you know, um, stories, you know, which of course are very appealing for the tourists, you know, and that support a, a high quality tourism experience, you know, because the, the tourist is not there to consume, you know, a hotel room, you know, or, uh, uh, um, you know, a seat uh, in, a, in an air, in a, in a plane, you know, but is looking for an enriching tourism experience, you know, and this is where I think creative tourism can bring a lot and by developing this storytelling about some of these products, you know, you can really raise the demand, uh, increase the revenues, and, 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 and make sure that um, economic growth and added value is, is there. We need to develop new sources of growth from creativity by developing new products, new products across different boundaries. As I was saying, you know, we need to go beyond this fragmentation and uh, uh, in order to, 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 uh, to create, a, you, know, you know, a different atmosphere and, and more density, you know, I would say, in, in the tourism product. Knowledge and skills are very important, definitely, you know, because for some of these issues, uh, we need to have people who are knowledgeable enough, for example, to support this storytelling, you know, to tell more about the tourism experience or to ensure that the tourist is participating in the product, you know. And this requires specific skills, you know, uh, because it's more than just giving something to a tourist, but it's bringing the, uh, the, the tourist, the visitor, the consumer, you know, in, you know, being part of a product, you know, being part of a development, you know, and this is much more delicate to uh, achieve. Um, and we, we think also this uh, uh, world of uh, creative tourism offers a, a big opportunity for stimulating local development and uh, regeneration. And here, you know, uh, we, we need to work with uh, regional and local authorities to exploit this potential, you know. So as you can see, you know, to conclude, you know, all these policy issues are very interlinked, you know, and I don't think we have to work in isolation, but we have to work in combination, you know, in order to stimulate this, um, linking, you know, tourism, culture, creativity, innovation, uh, and so on, uh, in order to uh, ensure that, that this will, will happen. So, as I said, uh, we are finalizing a, a report on, on this issue. Uh, which, will made, which will be made available um, before summer. We will do some policy workshop later on. All of this material will be available to, uh, to you if you want to uh, learn more. Um, and, and, and the OECD is also working on many other issues. Just to conclude, tomorrow I will uh, launch this publication also in the ITB. Uh, and this is about tourism trends and policies. And, 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 and one of the issues we are saying on tourism policy is that uh, this, is big, this is becoming more and more complex. You have been seeing many ministers. Some years ago, ministers were mainly focusing on uh, promotion. For example, if you come back 20 years uh, ago, nowadays, ministers, they have to connect with a number of other ministers in their government. Uh, if they want to ensure that the range of policies which affect tourism is uh, contributing to its best to support the performance of the tourism industry. So tourism is becoming a, a more complex uh, domain to, to develop. And, and, and here we need, uh, um, I think, in this area, the issue of 
culture and tourism and creative tourism is a very good, um, you know, w demonstration of this, I would say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dupera, for a very insightful presentation. We would welcome now questions and comments from you. <coughs> I see in the back already. So, can one of my colleagues help? Is there a microphone in the back? Or? If not, you can take this one here. Okay. <coughs> Please introduce yourself as well. Thanks. Yep. Thank you so much for the lecture. Uh, my name is Mats Fritzberger, um, a council member of the Danish United Nations Association. Um, could you please um, elaborate a bit around um, tourism as a mean of, um, of uh, um, producing income um, and investment? Um, how can we be able to use that um, to meet global uh, development goals? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, tourism, you know, is uh, an activity which uh, um, is based on many, you know, uh, public goods, you know, uh, uh, cultural goods. We just discussed a number of them. Uh, some are public, some are private, but also natural resources. We think that the visitor economy, you know, the tourism economy, is a magnific drive, uh, driving force, you know, to uh, improve, you know, the natural and cultural uh, resources which exist in any territory. You know, I think the good thing with tourism is that this is not only concentrated in some cities, you know, in some in a few places, you know, like some of the industries, but this is usually very well spread over the territory by stimulating, you know, the tourism economy, the visitor economy. We will of course, generate, you know, economic revenues that could then benefit to, uh, for example, the improvement of museums, the improvement of in infrastructure like routes. Uh, we need new airport because we have 20 million visitors coming to uh, Berlin. So we need to uh, re renovate, you know, the airport to rejuvenate, you know, the way we welcome visitors at the airport, that sort of things, you know. And this, of course, serve the visitor economy, you know, and the tourist, but it will also serve anybody else, you know, who is using these uh, facilities, you know. So, uh, for example, if you take the airport, you know, and a, a good intermodality connection with the center of the city, you know, um, investors will like it, and, and they will usually invest in that kind of cities where accessibility is good, where there is a good cultural offering, you know, where, uh, and so on and so on, where the attractiveness of a place is, is bigger, you know. Um, and the same is true for residents, you know, because residents, they live every day in the city, you know. Uh, if you take Paris, you know, over years, you know, we have been making major investments, you know, in, uh, in creativity and culture, you know, and this benefits before all, you know, to residents, you know, and I think this is this helps also, and this is part of a rationale for the intervention of a state, you know, in uh, supporting also the, the tourism economy. So I think this is our way to see the linkages with, um, you know, between visitors, residents, and investors. You know, uh, there may be other ways, but uh, over over ideas, you know, but I think this is. This is the fundamental idea, you know, that you generate a new economy which will support, you know, uh, the wider economy and not only tourism. Um, hello, my name is Ricardo Burgos. I come from Puerto Rico. I'm currently work working with the Puerto Rico government on tourism issues. And uh, first time I introduced the concept of creative economy and how it, it was an important topic in terms of tourism. The director of tourism told me, Ricardo, could you explain creativity? So my question is, uh, do you have any metrics that are, you, that are being used to measure uh, the impact and the relationship of creati uh, creativity and tourism? Yeah. Um, in, in the review which we are doing, and I could send you, uh, if you give you my 
you, I, will, I will send it to you, even if it's not final. I think it could give you a little bit of insight into the issue, you know. Uh, we have been trying not to spend too much energy on definitions and that sort of things. Nevertheless, we define, you know, uh, a list of uh, creative industries, for example, you know, which differ from one country to another, you know. Uh, some have 15, you know, uh, categories, I could list them, you know, but some would have 10, you know. So we have this list which exists, you know, um, and, and so this is, yeah, this is, I think, a base, you know, to make you thinking about, you know, because some, for example, you may, you will often think about film, uh, food, you know, uh, music, but maybe not about architecture or design or fashion, you know, or gaming or video, you know, of, you know, a wide range of, of, of uh, creative industries, which are also there, you know. Then I think the second part of your question was more about the economic impact. To do it, what? To, to measure uh, the impact on the economy. So this is, an, uh, this is an area of development. For the time being, they are known, you know, they are just individual experiences, you know. Uh, and some, as I mentioned, a few of them, you know, have been good in saying this generated X million of visits, X thousands of jobs, X, uh, you know, uh, economic uh, revenues, you know. But it's, it's no more than that. We have been trying at the OECD, I think four or five years ago, to do some work on the measurement of culture, which is close to, to this issue. Uh, but uh, so we have a few insights there, which I can provide you. Uh, but we have not concluded on the issue, because many countries were still not ready, I would say, uh, to do this. But this is still on the agenda. Uh, and I think we'll make, we'll make progress. But, um, you know, I think something that could be useful in this area, in tourism, I don't know if you're familiar, but we have been developing what we call the tourism satellite account, uh, which is a tool to measure, you know, tourism uh, in the economy. And tourism is also, as I said, like uh, creativity, a difficult, uh, you know, phenomenon to uh, where we put the border, you know. So now we are doing satellite account on health, on environment, you know, on things like that, which are difficult to measure, you know. And I think this, you know, domain of creative uh, culture, and I know that countries like Portugal, I think, are doing this. Uh, are, I think this is the way to go, probably, you know, if you really want to, in, to improve uh, the measurement. Final question. Final or comment? Okay. All right. Well, in that case, if we could all please express our sincere gratitude to Mr. Alain Dupera for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Dupera, if I could uh, trouble you for a photo before we leave the stage, it would be excellent. Just